Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Python's optimization mode, which you've probably not even heard of. Uh, Python has a special option, well, specifically C Python. I assume others also implement this as well. Uh, but Python has a dash O option, which enables optimizations, which is a bit of a misnomer in my opinion. Uh, it actually does two things. Well, three things if you use it twice. Uh, the first is it disables double under debug branches which is also a feature that I have literally never used. Uh, but in Python, you can define something that does if double under debug, uh, and this will only happen dur during debug time. Uh, so for instance, if we call this function, uh, I'm also gonna show you the disassembling of this. Uh, I did another video on this. I'll try and remember that one in the description, but I'll probably forget. <laughs> so you can just search my channel for, uh, Python is compiled, I believe is the title of that. Uh, but there's this magical global called double under debug, and during normal execution in Python, this is set to true, and so these branches will run. Again, I've literally never used this feature. I've never seen anyone else use this feature, but it exists. Uh, and so during normal execution, oop, yeah, you'll see that the double under debug branch ran, and you can see that the code for that still exists in the code object. However, if we enable optimization mode, dash, uh, dash O, not dash zero, dash O, uh, you'll see that it factored out that first print statement and also eliminated the code for it. So it's not even changing the value of debug to true or false, it's completely code eliminating it. Uh, I think the way it actually works is uh, Python also has special code for you know, if false and um, this code will get dead code eliminated, and I think this does the same thing. Python just knows that this is false. I don't actually know. I haven't looked at the <laughs> I haven't looked at the actual code for it, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, oh, interesting. What are these knobs? I don't know where these came from. Line four and line six. Line four. Oh, interesting. I'm surprised it compiles them as knobs at all instead of just uh, eliminating them. Uh, but anyway, you can see here that. The entire code branches are eliminated there as well. The other thing that one single dash O does is it removes assert statements. Uh, so if you had, you know, assert one uh, hello, this will always pass uh, in both both modes. Uh, but if you were to, oh, and in fact, it got code eliminated here because it's always true. <laughs> Let's make a function that returns true that way. Uh, it actually has something to do. Assert G. Yeah, so you can see here that it called G. Uh, load assertion error, load const, call function. This is it raising an assertion error if G were to fail. But in optimization mode, you'll see that that is completely code eliminated. So that's the other thing that dash O does. Now there's also a dash OO option, which uh, does a slightly more useless thing, which is it eliminates doc strings. So let's say that we had put a doc string up here, module doc string, <laughs> docu string, what am I doing? Uh, we can even have a function doc string. Uh, during normal execution, both of these will exist. So if we do Python three dash I T dot pi, and we print double under doc, we're gonna get the module doc string. If we do F dot double under doc, we're also gonna get the function doc string. Uh, however, in double optimization mode, OO, those will not exist. So if we look at double under doc, it's going to be none, uh, just to show that it's none. <laughs> the interpreter doesn't really show you when it's none that well, uh, besides just doing nothing. Uh, you'll also see that the doc string for F is also missing. Okay, so I've shown you what the optimization mode does. Now I gotta address the title of the video and say that it's useless. Uh, so the first reason that it's useless is one, double under de debug, I've never seen anyone use it. So we'll just throw that one out. It might be useful, but I don't think anyone actually uses that. Second, assert statements. Uh, eliminating assert statements in some libraries will break their functionality. I know it shouldn't be that way. I know you shouldn't rely on asserts in theory, uh, but some, some libraries do use asserts defensively. And since most people run Python without the optimization mode, they're not gonna notice that an assert missing will break the functionality. Now you shouldn't really use them for control flow, like they should just be used for defensive programming, but it doesn't always end up that way. And then the third is, uh, eliminating doc strings only really has two things that it could do. 
One, it eliminates, it, it decreases the code size slightly, so the compiled PyC won't contain the doc strings. The other thing is it causes bugs. So there are some frameworks out there, especially like argument parsing frameworks, command line frameworks, or other sort of metaprogrammery frameworks that read the doc string and then generate code based on them. Uh, there's a pretty popular uh, argument, I forget which one it's called, either fire or the other one, um, that reads the doc string at the top of the file and then uses that to generate a command line. And if there's no doc string, you can't do that. So it breaks the functionality. Uh, so yeah, my, my, my stance on this is like, no one uses it, it breaks code, and it barely makes things faster anyway. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could say like, uh, not running asserts will make the code ever so slightly faster, but go optimize the database query. You're gonna spend way better investment doing that rather than expecting optimizations to change anything. Uh, I also did a video on assert where I go over more details, so I'll try and remember to link that in the description as well, uh, since it ties into this pretty tightly. But anyway, I wanted to cover this uh, since it came up three times in my last stream, so hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.